Welcome to another edition of I Don't Normally Watch That here on JLJ Media. I'm James Lott Jr. Um, this one, of course, comes courtesy of all these tweets and YouTube videos and I saw the other day about Gerard Carmichael and his reality show. Um, and so I, I watched episode one. I saw the trailer, watched episode one, and I will now do my commentary. Um, but I have to first give you some context for me on how I don't really know much about him, what different generation he is. Um, I've heard the name, of course. I guess there was a show called The Carmichael Show a while back, and it was critically acclaimed, apparently, and I didn't watch that. I never watched it. Um, who did that? Um, I've never watched the stand-up. Um, I'd heard through the... Through the um, press that he came out as gay. I was like, okay, well, interesting, okay. I just still don't really know him. Um, saw his uh, Gloating Globes hosting, didn't care for him. I thought he was the wrong host for that specific type of, of um, award show. The Golden Globes are very different than the others, and I just, it just, he, for me, wasn't a good fit. I support it, though. I was like, young black man, being hosted on the Golden Globes, I still was supporting it wholeheartedly as I would, but ultimately I didn't really find much of the stuff. I think I think it bombed for me. So I'm going into this. I saw him on the view the other day talk about his show and how he really wanted to show as much reality as he could. But he said something that was very interesting. He said he feels more at home on camera, like he tells the truth more. When a camera is in front of him, that's where he gives the camera doesn't lie. I get what he's saying. I do camera work all the time, and I have no problem being transparent and real on camera. Um, and sometimes it is easier than in real life. So real life, R-E-E-L, compared to R-E-A-L, real life. So I kind of get what he's saying a little bit. I do. Now, of course, reality shows, I go into it going, okay, it's as much as a reality show as it can be, because obviously it is produced. Obviously, it's gonna be edited. You know, there's obviously there's all kind of stuff. So, but doesn't mean that, but it doesn't mean there isn't any value or any truth in there. Just, I just, I'm like, okay, it's gonna be it. It's on HBO, so HBO Max. So I want HBO to watch it. Um, there were a couple of parts that actually I found very realistic. Um, that we've all kind of been through, or many of us have been through here and there. I, again, Todd of the Creator. Don't really, again, no generation of me. I don't really know him. I know of him. I know he's an indie artist who's critically acclaimed. I've seen a few of his videos, outrageous videos over the years. But again, I couldn't name a song of his. But I'll know him. Um, and I don't even know what his background was. And so it was interesting for me as a Black man to watch these two kind of, I guess, queer Black men for entertainers who are successful in their fields. Because his first episode was taking place, he was nominated for an Emmy, which he had ultimately won the Emmy. Or not for a couple of Emmys, but he actually won an Emmy um, for a special. But it was it was it was interesting to see two black brown men on screen um and seeing what was going on because it was there the whole there's a section, spoiler alert if you haven't watched it. There's a whole section where he invites Tyler over with the cameras, of course, but they're in a room talking and the whole thing of Gerard being in love with him or having his major feelings for him. The part that was so I can relate to because I've been there where the other person clearly is not into you the same way or clearly doesn't want to go that direction. And so they do the whole, what do you want me to say? What do you want out of this? Blah, blah. And then you're trying to defend your heart. And you're kind of like, I don't know what you say, but you, but we all know what you want. The thing is, you want him to say, I have feelings for you too. You guys get together and that's that. That's what, that's what you want. That's what we, we've all been there. You know, and so that's what you want. So I felt that cringiness. I felt that rejection. I felt all that. That was like, to me, that was as real as it could be. And and the friend, uh, one of the friends was sitting there talking about his mom. 
she said some stuff that was completely real. Um, and she was like, you know, your mom's going through a journey too. Like she thought you were one thing all these years, and you're not. And so she has to go through her thing too. You're going through yours. She's going. She does love you, um, but it's tough. And so you know, black households and even just, just gay households appear in households appear when someone comes out as gay. It's tough for the parents. And I kind of I appreciated his friend who was really felt deeply about this. Was like you know, let your give your mother some grace. Yet I do understand also you're trying to find who you are. It's not your fault. It's like it's, it's, it's her shit. It's not your fault. I enjoyed that conversation uh, between two friends of someone who cares. Uh, so I'm glad he has somebody in his life, hopefully, that cares. So it, that was like another part that I thought was kind of real and realistic for people to watch and see this. Now, the parts that everybody's talking about, because we, we, we just have to go right there, of course. It's salacious. It's not been really shown on uh, uh, with gay black men on screen. Grinder. Anybody knows what Grinder is at this point? It's a gay app for hooking up. Or I should say, it's a men's app for hooking up for those who have sex with men. That could be anybody, obviously, right? A lot of gay, not everybody, but a lot of gays, uh, men are on that app. It's a, it's it's in the lexicon of, of our. Culture, they either brought up boy butter. Um, that was like, which is a lubricant. I mean, all this other stuff. Um, and I know that's all salacious. And for some people clutching their pearls, like that is just like, what? He's like, he has anonymous sex. I mean, the thing is, he's single. But at the time of doing this, he was single. He had, but he's young, he's free. I mean, okay. Now, did he have to do this in front of the camera? I saw some people talking about that. And why not? Straight people in reality shows show sexual encounters all the time. Um, again, we don't have a lot of black gay representation on TV. We just don't. That's of any kind. It's not. It's, it's not a lot of. It's not diverse. So I think, I think Gerard knew what he was doing. I think he knew exactly what he was doing by letting the grinder stuff be on there. But here's the part that's very another thing that's optically. Interesting. So Todd Crater clearly is a person of color. He's brown. But everyone else that he romantically or sexually is with were white. Or other. They're not black. Oh, that was interesting. I know that folks are criticizing that. And then, of course... His joke about race play, which, by the way, has been a recent topic I know in in the queer community and even in the porn community uh, and in the black community and the white community about what does that mean when you do race play? Now, race play, if you understand that, is where you it's not just it's a type of role play, but literally you're bringing race into it. So Gerard makes a joke that he stands by that he and his white boyfriend are into race play. And he does this little thing. I'm not going to repeat the joke, but that's me. That he talks about that. And that is what made people go buck wild. That's something inside that's out there right now anyway. It's like, is there such a thing as race play? I mean, there's, there's such a thing. But like, is it something that should be a thing? <laughs> um... I gotta tell you myself that would I that I I have zero interest whatsoever in that for me personally. Uh, I've done some role play, you know, with partners here and there, but never in that form. I don't find that amusing or sexual or hot. Um, being slave and master and all stuff that that does nothing for me. Calling me the N word while having sex that does nothing for me. That that stuff that just that would no they were just that would not at all. Um, we also show him sucking a non-black person's toes in one part and making out with them. Typical, like you know, a couple of guys. So, I mean, to me, showing the culture, if this is all how you are for real, then it should be on camera. I mean, you should have as much as you can on camera. That's that's close to real life to you. But I also get why optically it looks a little 
self-hating and in the and in the gay community especially um there is a, there is racism in the gay community first of all and there is division in the gay community and there are a lot of marginalized gays other gays that um there's a whole history folks of and, and, and this is all black men period have gotten this whole thing straight or gay like you get a little status you go with the white person there's always that thing or you get a person other uh you know somebody male other female other once you you know the black women or black men are left behind so i find it i actually find it interesting that he's opens a show with this i'm in love with another black man yet everyone else that you're sexually involved with or talking to you is white don't know i don't know gerard, gerard i don't know what his i don't know what his deal is i know we could psychologically you know we can all come up with stuff Sure, we can all come up with stuff and call out certain things. Uh, only he knows if there's self if there's self hatred or anything you know, going off for himself, or because of the rejection, he's just going out. I mean, I maybe he thinks it's all he can get. I know there's some folks who are in the community feel like getting you know, getting a white man may be the trophy thing that can help you get to bigger things. I mean, who knows? Uh, who knows what? Who knows what he's? I mean, I guess we'll watch the show, and if you watch the show, you'll see the journey that he goes through with this, and what does that mean for him? Um, in race, in our race relationships are always a tough subject, no matter what the uh, orientation is, and for good reason. They're tough. They can be tough for good reason, and I just think that Draw did. He put it out there. He put it out there, and, and it's just it's it's, of course, going to make headlines, and of course, the whole thing about him criticizing, you no know, criticizing, uh, Dave Chappelle and his trans comments, and Dave Chappelle wanting an apology. I just, I just it's all this and all that I came to get into. I'm just not into all that. Um. If you're a comedian, you tell your jokes. Not all of them land. Some of them bomb. Some of them are good. Some of them aren't good. I think that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, you, you should always stand by your jokes. I mean, if you do, or you wrote it, you did it. You have to stand by it. Um, no matter, no matter if anybody else doesn't like it. And he's still, and Gerard kept saying about his jokes. But I can see why some black gays, some black folks. We see this first episode and cringe on certain and certain parts of it. Um, I'm curious to see if the show, if, it, if that brings in more people watching it, because it brought me to watch it. Like I said, I normally wouldn't even watch it. I mean, it just sort of came and went. I wouldn't say anything. That got me to watch it. So it kind of, the controversy kind of worked in this case. It got me, I mean, I'm a commentator also, but it got me to look at it. I would have never looked at it. Never. Never looked at it. I looked at it. So... I don't know. It's just it's just uh people up in arms. And I and I always say this period. Because the black community, the gay community, the straight community, the white community, all the communities, there's just such um there's certain things people don't want to do not want to hear or have you say. That are going on just always just going on off camera. Uh, so to put them on camera it does illuminate them. And for me, I'm always down for conversation. So if this, if his comments or his show brings up meaningful conversations about all these different topics, I am totally down for it. And if it if it makes change on some level, and uh, you know, my thing is it's up to you. If you if you think the show is trash and you don't want to see him or you don't want to support him, then don't watch the show. Because we are in charge. We are the viewers. We are in charge. I mean, sometimes we forget that sometimes. Like, no, we, they work for us, so to speak. They entertain us. But you find something not entertaining, you think it's, then don't watch it. You know, and then, and then it'll go with its, its merry way. Or again, or, or watch it and see and follow it through and see where he's going with all this. Um, yeah, I don't think it's, I don't see about that. I just, it's, I didn't find it to be as horribly 
exceedingly like horrible or anything. I just thought the episode was okay. It's like he's showing a slice of his life, produced slice of his life. Um, and I was like, it, that's it. It was it was an interesting first episode. Now, will I watch? I have episode two. I'm I am, I am going to record tonight. I might watch another episode. It'll be my DVR. I didn't set up for the series. I said, well, let me look at number two and see what how I feel about this. Um, number two. But also, I have a show called Extra Connections Race Talk, and we talk about stuff like this. And we have an upcoming episode about interracial and and status. And we, we talk about race stuff, you know, all the time. And this conversation should be talked about, including all that stuff. So, um, of course, leave your comments below. Uh, I have a bunch of shows, again, that I don't normally watch, and I'll have more I'll be, I'll be viewing also. Until next time, I'm James Lodge Jr. Talk to you next time.